and welcome to this week's Artist on Art. Yay! <laughs> I've got Sabrina Habel here in the KZSE studios. Thanks for coming in, Sabrina. Thank you, Nana. Boy, I've been excited. I've been waiting to interview you for a long time. <laughs> Today is February 20th, 2012. Love all the twos. It's an auspicious day. Mm. 202020. Um, Sabrina is here to talk about her upcoming art exhibition called The Spectacle. The It's called the Seeing Spectacle. Seeing Spectacle. And we got a whole bunch. We want to talk about that. But before that, we talk about get into the nitty gritty of Sabrina's artwork. I just want to tell you a little bit about Sabrina. Sabrina is a uh, graduating digital arts and new media uh, graduate student. Uh, this is the MFA program here at UCSC. Um, it's a two-year program and she's fixed, completing her second year. She enjoys uh, kittens. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Things that sparkle. Um, her, she's a multimedia artist who does um, many different ways of, of uh, conveying her ideas. She uses painting, photography, video, and uh, she's uh, all about subverting the capitalist spectacle, which I love. Yeah, I and uh, you, come, you come here uh, from the spectacle, from the marketing world, right, Sabrina? Um, actually, I started out and I got my undergrad in uh, political science, so it's kind of about getting agency over the spectacle and agency over the yeah. spectacle what the heck does that mean <laughs> um just kind of the fact that you know all these mass media images are are everywhere and um you know only big corporations sort of have a control over the imagery that you see in public spaces um so i thought well why can't i show what i want to show in public spaces and why can't i sort of take hold of the spectacle and and, uh, you know, show my own version of it. Take, take hold of the spectacle. That, that makes me think that there, there's something you can take hold of. But th didn't you do something between graduating from your undergraduate in, in poli-sci? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I spent two years um, in Oakland working for a grassroots nonprofit in philanthropy there. And so were you doing promotion there? Um, yeah, I did a bit of that, and marketing. I've done some pre uh, some freelance marketing for startups and that kind of thing. So even though you were a political science major, you were still making art? Yeah, absolutely. And and would you say it was mostly visual art at that time? or what kind Yeah, of it was mostly um, painting and collage and, and mostly 2D art at the time. And then once I came to Danum, the Danum program just sort of like exploded trying to dabble in as many <laughs> mediums as possible and and sort of play with all the equipment we have here. So tell us a little bit about the different dabblings that you've been doing so we can get a little a better idea of what your art practice is like. Sure. Um, so the, the piece that I'm doing for our MFA show, Seeing Spectacle, um, is um, a series of works and it ranges from an installation piece that's sort of like a big window display uh, to large scale print advertisement in the hallways and the stairwell of our building. And then also... Um, a lot of video, making a lot of mock commercials with green screen and doing a lot of crazy composite video editing to get these really crazy uh, videos that are obnoxious. And also... Um, and spectacle... Spectacular? Spectacular, absolutely. <laughs> In full every way. spectacle, full of <laughs> dazzle, full of... Yeah, uh, shock you and amaze you, yeah. And also pink. I'm uh, working on, speaking of hot pink, I'm working on a tabloid. It'll be a full <laughs> issue of of a ecological tabloid where you can find all the gossip of natural elements and <laughs> strange ah. species. Yeah, so who's hanging out with you? Exactly. Which electron <laughs> is getting close to the other exactly. proton? <laughs> 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 and yeah. one of the great things is you're you're in, are you still inviting um, help actors? Yeah, in that? actually, um, I'm looking for actors, actresses, voiceover people all ethnicities, ages, um, I kind of want to get a full, full, full effect. So 
So if you want to be spectacular in one of these spectacle video f- photo type things, you need models and actors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And and voiceovers. So if you've got a yen for this, how how would they get a hold of you, Sabrina? Um, you could find uh, my page and my email on the uh, UCSE Danum website under Current Students. I have a, a little page there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, my website is www.hypnagogian.com. <laughs> Hypnagogian. You're going to have to spell that yeah. for us. So it's H Y P N O G O G I A N. Hypnagogian. And what does Hypnagogian mean? Um, well, hypnagogia is a state between waking and dreaming. So, hypnagogian is sort of this word I made for, you know, a citizen of that realm. (laughs) Excellent. You are listening to Artist on Art. I'm speaking with Sabrina Habel. She is one of the graduates this year out of the Danum, the Digital Arts and New Media program here at UCSC. Every year, I try to interview every single one of the Danum graduates. Danamites, I like to call them. (laughs) And (laughs) Sabrina, you're my first one and I'm so glad because we've I've known you since you first came to the to the program. I was on my way out. You're on your way in. Mm -hmm. Actually I'd already been on my way out. I was just trying to hang on as long as I could. (laughs) (laughs) And um and it's just been really fun to see you around town and you've been doing art installations and, and doing First Fridays. I mean, you've really right. hooked into the community right away. Um, how, how did you do that? Was it the Poet and the Patriot? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I part of my goal right now is just to show as much work as possible. Also, because I came out of undergrad with a degree in international relations I really didn't have much of a portfolio so I kind of wanted to see the Santa Cruz art scene spice up a little bit (laughs) and tried to invite myself as many places as possible to show work and actually I have a um, I'm in a group show right now in Seattle it's called uh, Cat Faces and (laughs) you know my kitten love drove me to uh, give them some work for that, and all the work in the show has cat faces somewhere in them. Um, so, so were these be... photographs that you you gave them, yeah. or montages? For this uh, for the show, it was large format digital prints of cats collaged on top of giant diamond clusters and had d- twinkling diamond eyes, and <laughs> sort of an homage to this imaginary uh, nightlife character that I've made up uh, for. Tokyo night scene. So it's this for whole, your kitty, for my kitty, my diamond cat. <laughs> yeah, it's a big sprawling imaginary story that goes on and on. <laughs> That's wonderful. So part of your, um, so part of my deal is I'm trying to get everybody on, um, either artist on art or gamers on game. A lot of the the Danums that that are graduating this year, the people that are in your cohort, they like to call it the Roman army that we are when we're <laughs> getting through the Danum process. Um, will be coming on in the next couple months. And your, uh, your show, your MFA graduating show this year is called I've Got Something on Your Mind. And the show begins April 28th, and it'll run April 28th and 29th, and then May 3rd through 6th with the main reception event, which is like really hotsy totsy everybody, uh, May 4th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. And all of this is at The Dark, which is the Digital Arts and Research Center here right across from the music and what was so lovely built right in front of the the art studios (laughs) so they get to see this big concrete thing instead of the beautiful view of the ocean, which now you get to see out of the dark. I love it. I love it, too. (laughs) Digital art supersedes. Yes. (laughs) I I can't believe I said that. I also wanted to just talk about some of who who makes up the cohort. So could we do like a real quickie? Joelle Ruel. Oh, Jolie Ruel. Jolie Um, Ruel. She does uh, stop motion animation, and she's working on a project uh, that deals with stop motion animation and um, psychology. (laughs) Helen H. Park. Helen does a lot of social practice stuff. Her project um, will actually be off-site at a public school in New York. Oh, wow. And she'll be showing the documentation of the show. Yeah. And so she'll be doing that before before April 28th, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Because the documentation will be shown there. Mm-hmm. Duncan Bowsman. 
Uh, Duncan is a really gifted um, interactive fiction writer, and he writes these really zany, adventurous, interactive digital stories that you kind of navigate through. That'll be on at the show. Nice. Yeah. Daniel Christopher. Daniel is working with um, a, an interactive uh, installation project uh, with light sensors, and it's sort of like a collaborative experience, um, I, more abstracted like collaborative interactive art yeah okay we'll have to go to see that one <laughs> jesse fulton um jesse what are you doing jesse <laughs> <laughs> what Something, kind of artist is he he uh does a lot of uh, web-based projects and is really great at programming and coding and um is probably hacking into the internet somehow and gathering all sorts of information that way <laughs> james pollock um, James is working on a 3D interactive game that would take place on the internet. Um, and so there'll be a kiosk where you can participate in the game. Right on. Heather Logas. Heather is working, another gamer, working on a uh, physical game with, uh, it's another collaborative and cooperative game that would, uh, where you work with your the people you're playing with to achieve the goal of the game. Yeah. All right. Emily Martinez. Um, Emily is working on this incredible, sprawling, um, beautiful video montage uh, thing that's hooked up with your brain waves, <gasps> and it's like a oh. flash rate of you know how much your eye can handle in like different brain states um, with really iconic and crazy imagery. Oh, that um, sounds great, <laughs> Natalie McKeever. Uh, Natalie's working on a s installation video and also uh, like bioreceptor project where your pulse will be um, compared with animal pulses and there'll be visual outputs and video that go along. Oh, with that. fabulous! Alexi Othin Girard. Yeah, and Alexi is working on a game as well where uh, it takes place over the area of Santa Cruz and one of the sort of like. What's the word for it? Um, the bases, I guess, would be located at the MFA show, and players can go to that space to c for their continuing their gameplay. All right. I understand. So there you have it, folks. That is the graduating class of digital arts and new media for 2012. You get to see their work that we just described that Sabrina Habel showed us uh, April 28th through the 29th and then May 3rd through 6th with the big old reception that you got to go to Friday May 4th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. I'm telling you, it was like people were hanging off of the terrace last <laughs> year. It was like jam-packed. And then the gallery uh, hours that will be open April 28th and 29th and then May 3rd through 6th is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the name of the installation or exhibition is called I've Got Something on Your Mind. And it sounds like all of these things are... are uh, all of these projects would go under this type of umbrella of um, digital arts somehow uh, gathering information about other people's minds. And, <laughs> and kind of, a little. Yeah. And also the um, reception coincides with First Friday, so you can sort of integrate that into your First Friday art walk around Santa Cruz. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's just a little hike up the hill <laughs> and back down. Luckily, there'll be, bu there'll be buses. Um, it was, like I said, a lot of fun last year. And, and I'm sure this year, every year, the crop just gets better and better. You know, the technology just keeps getting better and better, mm -hmm. too. So, um, such as when I was in, in the Danum department from... Let's say I started in 2007 to 2009. I was really into bioreceptors and neurotransmitters, but the the ability to get an EEG gram, a functional EEG gram, uh, was really expensive and really hard. And 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 so there's there, there's these limitations that I had even just three years ago that have opened up tremendously. And it's just a kind of a it's a sign of how the technology is just getting faster and faster mm -hmm. and, and just you got to hang on. 
Definitely. Sabrina <laughs> Habel, tell us more about seeing spectacle. I, I noticed one of the images you had was like a, it was like a billboard and it said something about topsoil. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that specific piece. So, um, you know, the whole overarching idea is I'm sort of creating my own media spectacle. And uh, the twist is that all of the celebrities and the characters and the products are, um, you know, really important natural elements that are sort of crucial to ecological success and the environment. Um, so the topsoil billboard is part of this whole topsoil campaign, which sort of reimagines uh, topsoil, which is like, a, you know, a standard of biodiversity and, and, and health um, in the ecosystem and reimagines it as sort of this ultimate luxury item, you know, on the same realm as, say, you know, Cartier or Louis Vuitton, that kind of thing. Um, so now Topsoil gets the luxury advertisement treatment that usually is, is sort of denied that, that element. Um, so actually, the, the window display that I'll be making for the series will have the Topsoil campaign inside of that, and it has some swanky commercials that go with it, that kind of thing. So what, do you, what are the swanky commercials? Like, how do you make your own Topsoil? Uh, no, it's, it's, you know... Get you down. Wa you yeah. want topsoil. It's really good for you, you know. It, actually, the, the tagline is uh, soil yourself, spoil yourself, <laughs> topsoil. So it's, you know, I got this sort of cheesy and <laughs> absurdist humor that goes along with it. And it's a big wheelbarrow full of topsoil. So yeah, just tons of dirt. You know, really great, great dirt. Do you have any That's people so like important. rolling around in it? Yeah, we're. I think we'll get to Some that newbies? point. Some Maybe some, you know, men in tuxedos <laughs> rolling around in, oh, in soil. Right, 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 right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> what, give us another one. Um, and then, let's see. So around the, the whole series is sort of taking advantage of the non-gallery spaces of the building. Um, so the entire stairwell will be huge ads of um, sort of alternate reality of this, like, egocentric world. Um, and right now what I'm envisioning is uh, alternative uh, architecture. So having sort of these hyper cities that are super high density and the advertisements in the stairwell would sort of um, exemplify, you know, these these new architectures and efficiencies. And um, I'm working on trying to get a, a blimp for the top of the stairwell to fly up there and <laughs> maybe talk about air particulates or something like that. And um, also scattered around around the building will be these kiosks with the tabloids where you, if you want to, you know, buy one, you could take one and look through it and you could take one home with you and, you know, catch up on your, your gossip about, you know, what the Atlantic Ocean is doing or who the sexy sunsets are, who the sick sunsets are and <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, and then the last piece is sort of this invasive commercial loop with all the zany commercials uh, from this same parallel universe that I've created. A, a, a universe that could be used very badly here right now with right. The, the state of our, our, our globe. Yeah, there's been so many scare tactics and I just kind of wanted to be more optimistic and positive and what if we just thought of a new way of living instead of sort of getting down about the one we're already in. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sabrina Habel is on Artist on Art Today. Boy, am I glad to talk with you. Tell us about the, you just had a, a show up at The Motive downtown mm -hmm. and it has had to do with maps. Uh, it was dealing with uh, diagrams and uh, technical drawings and sort of the aesthetics of of a diagram when you don't have a key to dis decode it. You know, they're kind of totally meaningless without these keys. And so that's sort of the root of the title, Cypher Graph, is this, like, puzzle graph, you know, this this indecipherable image that sort of has all sorts of connotations or reminds you of things, but you might still not know what it is. And you can just sort of enjoy it for its aesthetic value versus ah. its utility.
Yeah. Well, that, that, that kind of gives me, we just have five more minutes and mm-hmm. I don't know if we have enough time, but let's talk about the spectacle because okay. the spectacle isn't really utilitarian. <laughs> no. <laughs> just saying, if anything, it's the opposite. Right. So how would you, how would you describe spectacle and then helping people see the spectacle? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we have any time to talk about, you know, just how about, you know, what, where your ideas are rooted in. I know it's Guy Debord, but maybe mm-hmm. we could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, it started with, uh, reading Society of the Spectacle and Guy Debord and and I think uh, his vision of the spectacle, this mass mediated images that are constantly you know, bombarding society that's sort of dumbing down society that's sort of blanketing, you know, hidden agendas of government, that kind of thing um, and capitalism and capitalism especially uh, is only evolving with all the more technologies that are introduced um, so I think if anything um, this, I- this sort of new idea of the spectacle is becoming more and more prevalent in our society and um, you know, I was thinking about how how to intervene some way, and and um, because the spectacle is you know it's magical, it's fantastic, it's sparkly and shiny and fun, and you, you love it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's desirable. You want to go and see it and be part of it. Um, Las Vegas, exactly. So <laughs> it's like, how do I you know how do I get my hand in that, and how do I sort of repurpose it for something beyond just superficial consumerism. And you mean political activists? <laughs> yeah. You could use those, <laughs> say those words, I suppose. Save the world? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> do what I can here there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was something about pitting something that's so desirable with something that's so important, such as the environment, ecosystems, and getting away from the usual tactics of environmental groups where they're like guilting you into caring or or they're scaring you into caring and it's like why don't we get your your greed and your gut gluttony and your like uh you know fantasy to help you right. care about what's going on like madonna yeah why not <laughs> use celebrity use use all the glitz use and glamour you can to e- save the world exactly sabrina habel it's been so great having you on we have i don't know if we got uh, just one more minute you talk about Guy Debord and the spectac- the Society of the Spectacle. Um, he's a part of the Society of the Situationalists. Mm-hmm. And could you, your piece that you're doing, the seeing spectacle, is using situationalism, situ- <laughs> the situationist <laughs> philosophy, uh, with using dark. Tell us just a few, you know, a little bit about that. Um, so, uh, Situationists International have this term called detournement, which basically means like derailing the original purpose of, of you know, these commercial uh, images that we see every day. So, I'm kind of taking it a step further. And the Situationists would sort of collect things already out in the world and and Repurpose you know paint them. over them and collage them and make them crazy. And I'm sort of starting a step before that and just looking at the aesthetics of uh, commercials out there and fully creating them from from the ground up in this total fantasy but still using those iconic you know color schemes and uh, fonts and animations that you see that just uh, that are used in marketing the right. spectacle exactly I, I was also thinking that the tournament can also be done while you're walking you you're you're being um, derailed uh, by your kind of uh, unconscious uh, mm-hmm. movement through life uh, from the work to the house from the house to the store and so you're confronted by things that kind of stop you mm-hmm. and put you in a state that is not normal. Um, maybe some would even say that's the artistic state. And so having, I, th- I see your work also in a way uh, derailing, like you're walking up the stair steps and you're confronted by this right. this media uh, advertising image that doesn't make sense. So it right. kind of knocks you out of that. So yeah, anyways, that's my little thing. Getting <laughs> out of the, the, the typical non, the gallery spaces and sort of taking it to the public realm is kind of key to the whole thing yeah. well thank you so much thank Sabrina you. Habel everybody this has been uh, Artist on Art please stay tuned for uh, Gamers on Game I've got Ben Samuel on who is uh, doing uh, a lot of different stuff actually and uh, Sabrina Habel uh, please come back on whenever Absolutely. you can <laughs> and um, 
I can't wait to see your work. Thank it's you. been great. If you missed any part of this show, don't worry. I've got the video and the audio will be coming up really soon. You'll want to see Sabrina. She's beautiful. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>